USA Technologies, which you work for, is in the un unattended retail or unassisted retail? What is the right term? Um, unattended retail. Unattended retail yep. space. Now, for those I, I care, for those who may not know, why is this industry important? Yeah, so it's an industry that's been around for many generations. Um, if you think about, you know, just your old vending machine that might be sitting in a corner somewhere at the airport at uh, a business location, these are multi-generational companies that have been around for a long time and, and for the most part did not have to worry about innovation technology. It was a convenience play. They had a service, a machine. They put it where that service was needed by a consumer um, and they hoped that somebody walking by, potentially, um, would buy something from them. So it's been around for a really long time. It's the technology that really is um, uh, creating an adaptation of that market and moving it forward. And why I think that it's important right now is what we're seeing with how um, we approach retail today is as a consumer, we're looking as we go into retail stores to um, duplicate sort of the experience that we have online. Everyone's using their phones. If you go into even big box retailers today, you can potentially buy your own stuff, check out, um, get information. There may be robots in the store that are providing assistance to you. Um, the stores themselves are looking to replicate this kind of online um, self-served experience that we're all used to today. And so these old businesses find themselves in a perfect position to become incredibly relevant now. Um, whereas, you know, maybe 20 years ago, there was a concern that they were becoming irrelevant. So with technology, connecting the machine, allowing for digital payments, allowing for um, personalization, uh, that connection, you can bring AI experiences, uh, you can bring loyalty and rewards programs, all of these things are now taking what was potentially an antiquated industry, bringing it into the future, and also um, becoming an enabler for retailers who are looking to get out of the traditional brick and mortar model to bring their products and services to where consumers are today. So we see this sort of conglomeration of these two industries, the old and the new, coming together and learning from each other. And so the market is actually incredibly exciting right now. Mm -hmm. So just to quantify it, the cashless or cashless payment industry, how mm -hmm. big is it? Um, so our, I can speak on behalf of our business. Um, we have about a million machines that are connected to our service right now. The majority of them are all accepting cashless payments. Um, again, that sort of was the enabler for everything else. Um, Is this in the food industry? It's everything. So it's food, it's um, self-service car wash, it's um, commercial washers and dryers. Um, it is uh, parking meters and kiosks. Again, anything that you would normally see as a cash-based business is potentially a customer of ours. Mm -hmm. Now, I can see why, you know, 20 years ago this was, um, this was much needed. And no one was talking about payment processing at, at that point in time. And uh, needless to say, you've been very successful in conquering several sections of the market. How do you look at the market now with competition, new, with new, newer companies like Stripe and Square? that are in the payment processing space and that are trying to get a chunk of your market? Yeah, so, so um, you know, a rising tide floats all ships. We, we, don't com we don't compete directly against a company like Square, um, but what it does is just continue to make consumers more and more comfortable with those kinds of payment applications. And so it creates um, consumer demand within our customer base um, and moves that consumer in the direction where your companies that we do business with have to make a decision. So what we're seeing is, um, companies who are not willing to invest in technology, who are not willing to invest in innovations, um, are being bought up or selling. Um, and companies who are being more innovative and progressive and who are um, adopting this technology are the ones who are doing the buying and growing. Uh, so there is definitely a decision. There's still a crossroads that's happening in that market. But what we're seeing more and more is companies who don't make that investment in technology are going to the sidelines. Let's talk a little bit about consumer behavior. I find this fascinating. When, um, when let's say a store or a machine goes from accepting cash to being cashless, mm -hmm. how does consumer behavior change? What do people do with their money? Yeah, so, so the first thing that happens is you get about a 30% increase in revenue at that machine. Why is that? 
uh, because about 30% of the people walking by the machine don't have cash in their pocket, and it's probably more today. Um, that statistic continues to increase. I have about $3 in my pocket right now, and I'm not even the target demographic. Um, so people walking by may want to do business with that company, may want to buy a product or service from that machine, and simply can't do it if they don't have the cash. Um, so the experience completely changes. You get an increase in revenue because more people are buying from you, and they're buying potentially more expensive things. Um, they're not um, limited to the $2 that they have in their pocket. Um, and also the experience is better. You're not worrying about crumpled dollar bills, looking for change. It's quick anymore. You can just use your digital wallet like Apple Pay, Tap, Go. You're out of there. Um, and so the consumer experience is much better. In addition to that, um, it's now not an anonymous purchase. So cash is anonymous. Those companies had no idea who were, who were doing business with them. So we talk about data. Um, these companies are getting a lot smarter. They know who's buying from them, how often they're buying from them. Um, they can profile the demographics, be a lot more selective about the goods and services that they're offering to target those demographics. And so everybody wins. You know, RBC Capital Markets, I think, just came out with a report about how uh, revenue for stores with automated checkout just increases by a certain percentage. And I, I'm blanking on the number. Uh, and that is just super exciting, especially because right now there is there are a number of really great startups working in the autonomous checkout space. Full disclosure, we invested in a company called Standard Cognition, uh, which does uh, which helps stores, you know, provide a full uh, full fledged cashless automated checkout experience. Now, how and, and the most famous player in this space is Amazon Go. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you hear this a lot. Of course. Yep. How how do you view that development, I think Amazon has promised to have something like 300 stores by the end of next year or something like that in, in the US. Yeah, I think it's, it's real. Um, and what it does is validate um, our business model and the business model of our customers. So what most people in this room probably don't know is there's a version of Amazon Go that has been um, quickly accelerating in the marketplace with our customer base. It's called a micro market, and it's been around for a long time now. And it has been taking the place of either an attended convenience store experience where the labor is expensive, um, and also uh, like a vending machine where maybe the goods, goods that are offered in the vending machines don't potentially have the perception as being as fresh or as gourmet. And so these micro markets have actually been proliferating at a pretty steady pace over the last few years. And so from my perspective, Amazon Go saw an opportunity um, and then took it up like five notches. So the good thing there is um, they are bringing this out into the public. There's been a lot of conversations around it. And the customers in our markets are doing things similar to what the banks are doing when they look at these small startup companies and saying, oh boy, there's some additional technology out there that we could potentially leverage in our own business to make that consumer experience even better. So at the end of the day, the consumer always wins. Now, we, we can see this experience being applied to, like I said, food, uh, food, and, uh, the food and beverage industry, the entertainment industry, or even in transportation logistics. What is the frontier? What is the one application that we haven't thought about that you may know of? Oh, or what do you predict yeah, will happen Yeah, next? so I don't know what the application is that maybe we haven't thought of, but I think what we're going to see a lot of in the next um, you know, three to five years is um, these big box retailer um, brands that consumers have a high affinity to um, showing up in sort of these pop-up applications where consumers are. So no more does the consumer have to actually get in the car and drive to go to um, a store to buy the product of their choice. But if there is a school or a workplace or an airport or um, a, you know, a, a um, uh, railway station, those are the places where consumers are, where they live, work, and play that we're going to start to see these things proliferate. Um, and the good news is it's not just the larger companies who, who will benefit from this. It's also small entrepreneurial companies who uh, don't have to invest in real estate, um, who can put up a small pop-up um, and not have to have labor there, and be assured that consumers will know what to do, because it's becoming um, a pretty standard experience anymore, which is saying something. Mm -hmm. And finally, to say critics who may say that 
automation is uh, means you know loss of jobs and that's you know pushing uh, a lot of people out of the job market. Uh, retail workers are a huge segment of the working population. What would you say? Yeah, so I think it will it will change, right? The, the jobs aren't going away, but the jobs will change. So. Jobs that would be typically, um, you know, more menial and high labor intensive, um, but low value for the companies, I think will move to an automated um, situation. And so those cuts, those uh, employees, just like the companies themselves, also have to be adaptive. The big box retailers are not going away. The in-store experience is not going away. But what those employees do. Um, to um, actually interact with the consumer within those stores will change. So employ people to serve the customer instead of you know doing menial jobs. Correct. All right. On that note, that's that was a great discussion. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so I don't much. Think we have time for questions, but thank you and thank you all. You've been uh, thank you. a great audience.